Barry, you're one of the most versatile guys in the music business that I know, and you've been at it a long time. That's probably why you are. Can you just go back to your musical beginning and kind of touch on what you've done up until now? Yeah. Uh, basically, I started playing like a number of years ago, back when we used to live on a farm, when I was a wee lad. And uh, I just started playing guitar. My uncle gave me a guitar. I started playing it. Then uh, we moved to the big city. And uh, I just got really involved in music because I've always been interested in music. And then in high school, I started playing in groups that I own. Little rock bands used to play the streets of them on that one. And uh, then I started playing with a group called the Rebels. And that's when things started happening for me as far as uh, recording wise went. Because during that period, I had a number of records that did quite well for us. And I was voted most promising male vocalist one year. And then the next year, I was voted uh, the top male vocalist in Canada. And then about a year ago, I joined a group called Painter. And we went to the States. We worked out of Seattle. And we had uh, a record that did very well for us down there, a thing called West Coast Mullet. But then again, the uh, the traveling and the, you know you know all the strains of being on the road, and then uh, it, it was difficult on my family. And uh, I found it just wasn't worth the time away from my family, no matter how well the group did and whatnot. It couldn't buy back the time that I lose with my like especially my little guys. You know. And that's when I came back and I started working on the engineering staff at Century Two as well. And then uh, during that time, I started started playing as a, a single, like I just do have knowledge to myself and guitar. And I've I've really sort of found myself as far as singing techniques and stuff there because I've just got into being myself. An album that we've been hearing a lot about is the Scarlet and Gold album. And it's a composite album of a lot of different talents combined. And uh, you're singing the theme tonight, The Brave Men. How did you become involved with the Scarlet and Gold album? Uh, originally, that was cut about two years ago. And uh, Tommy Banks approached me on uh, singing the RCMP theme for me. In fact, it, it was done for an ad agency out of Vancouver. And it's an old theme, by the way. And they just revamped, you know, wrote new lyrics for it. So uh, I went into the studio and just played my guitar and sang a tune to a click track. And then uh, Tommy came in later and put all the orchestration on it. And it blew my mind when I heard it later. I said, God, what's happened, you know? But it, it really was an experience. And it was, uh, it was really an honor for me. I felt really, really honored that they asked me to do it because it, uh, it turned out quite well. And it's got a lot of mileage, too. But it was fun. After having performed so different many types of music over the years, is there one particular area that now seems most comfortable that you'd like to pursue? Uh, I think the area that I've fallen into that I like best are in the tunes that I, the tune that I open the show with, and the tune that I close with, the one called "Goodbye Misfortune." That that is the style that I that I've fallen into, and I feel that is more me. I really I enjoy singing that way, and that uh, and it's it's. Uh, it's different. I think it's a good direction for me. And I found uh, uh, the fellow that wrote the tunes, Gay DeLorme, him and I really work well together. And I think it's it's a good combination. And this is the type of direction I want to go. It's more of a an acoustic thing, you know, with guitars and, and you know, nice laid back singing and nice pipes. You know. Well, you've experienced the, certainly enough travel and, and all the things you have to do to follow through on hit records. Now you're faced with the very likely possibility of, of having a hit record again. And how would you follow that up to avoid the being away from the family and the things that you don't like? Well, I think maybe what I'll do is television shows. You know, if the record hits, then you do television shows and uh, and maybe do like the odd concert things. I think if, uh, if you've got a record and it's going to warrant you being out and financially, you can, uh, you know, if you've got enough money coming in, it, it helps. Uh, overcome the burdens of being away from your family. You know, but it's, uh, I think mainly that's what I would do, is like to do the television things and uh, maybe play the odd concert, but not much for I, I just like traveling. Well, do you feel that the uh, experience as an engineer and, the, and on the technical end of things will be an asset to you when you go to record your own songs? Oh, definitely. Because uh, just for the simple fact that when I, when I go to record, you don't have to, that's another person, you don't have to try and communicate through to try and get, you know, you, you always hear things. 
the way you want to, you know, and then to try and communicate to another person, it, you know, it's really difficult because people always hear uh, things differently. And being in, involved in the engineering thing this way, I get to sit behind the console and I record the things the way I want them, want to hear them. The only problem is that you can't record yourself, your voice, part, you know, but it definitely is an asset. You know. I think uh, eventually I want to fall into uh, producing and engineering because I like doing the, the studio thing. And I think, like, I like performing, but there's something uh, really satisfying about being involved in the studio and, and creating and the fact that when you finish it, you can go into the control room and sit down, and you got some. There's something tangible right there. 